Hey, hey everyone, Neil Napier here. We are on our Kaivia walkthrough session number five today. And today is all about showing you some sample membership sites that have been created with Kaivio. This won't be a long session. It definitely will not take an hour. I'm thinking somewhere between half an hour to 45 minutes. What I will be doing today is answering a lot of questions that you might still have about memberships and showing you maybe a few advanced things that you can do as well. But most importantly, showing you some sample membership sites that we have created. Now, in this case, I cannot show you our customers' membership sites because a lot of that is paid content, but I will show you a lot of what I'm doing myself. So as always, let's do a quick mic check. Let's make sure you're all awake and you have your coffee, tea, Red Bull, whatever you need to have in your hand to move forward with this session. So let me know if you can hear me all right and if you can see the screen as well. The screen should have the Guy Viewer Setup Guide and soon I'll jump into an example. All right. Wolfgang says, yes, Katana, Kim, Nigel, Nikki as well. All good. Good. Excellent. Uh, will there be another session on doing funnels? Kim, no, because I think I did about three sessions on that. But if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer in our Facebook group or via support desk. Uh, where are the replay of the past sessions held? All the replay are, let me open this up, in support.guyvio.com which is where our knowledge base is. Let me open that up. Okay, if you go into a knowledge base, you'll see all the sessions over here. All right, yeah, everything is recorded. Everything is recorded. So I'm just gonna drop this link for everyone so you can actually go and check out the replays afterwards uh, or whenever you get a chance. Okay, perfect. Cool. So let's go ahead and let's talk about membership sites today. Uh, more, most importantly, showing you some examples and also some advanced things later on. This is the screen, by the way, that I didn't show you last time out in my membership site walkthrough because that site wasn't really set up. But if you are just starting out with creating a membership site, this is the setup page that you will see. And as with anything that you do, online you need to do a little bit of setup in the beginning with smart memberships we've tried to minimize that setup required so when you first come in you'll see like a four minute long video right over here that you can watch which explains to you how everything needs to be set up and a lot of it is just about putting in the right words for the right things so a site title a slug you know what do you want to show to people and what do you want as footer text these simple things then you've got email settings as well where, you know, again, I haven't filled this up so you don't see it. Email settings is where you can set up what kind of emails people will receive when, for when they set up their account, when they pay, when there's an upgrade, when there's a downgrade, welcome email, forgot password, stuff like that. And all of this is language agnostic, which means that if you want to write something in Spanish, you can do that too. If you want to write something in uh, in Another language, you can do that as well. Let me see if I can find. So I'm in, in Maylie's account right now. Let me see if she's set up one of these sites and I can show you a live example. I know this one set up. Okay, well, obviously it's set up, so it's gone. But you can see in the settings, you've got all the, all the details here, including email settings. So welcome email, there is confirmation email, forgot password, purchase, received, and canceled subscription email. So there are all these different emails that are already in place here as well. But what I want to show you most importantly today is inside the members area, show you a little bit of what she has built, what I have built. And again, like I said, because of the privacy of the content, I can't really show you a lot of our customers' content. I can only show you mine. So I'll show you a few different products that we have in there. Now, Kaiview Academy is not my product. It's not something that I created. It's something that Melia did herself. And when I'll show you the product, it'll make sense. It's something that she has been able to do because she's been using Kaiview for much longer than many other people have. And in fact, at one point, she actually served as our paid support agent. For now, she just volunteers. So she doesn't get paid by us. 
She just runs this Kaiview Academy where I believe she charges between $29 and $49 a month. And she teaches about 45, 50 people everything about Kaiview. You know, how to use the funnels, how to use the membership guide. If they have any question, I think she does three calls a week and I'll show you that soon. And she helps them out all the way through. So she has four different modules. As you will see, I'm still logged in as her, but even if I was logged in as a customer, I'll be able to see this. How many lessons exist and how many have I completed? There's all this information over here. Plus, for each module, there's also the quiz option. So it's possible that she hasn't actually activated it, but there are quiz options as well. So there's a button to join now. Now, in this case, she has just put up a quick button that gets people to join her live classes. I'm not going to click on this, but it allows people to essentially subscribe to her YouTube channel and get notifications when new videos go live because she runs everything via Hangouts. And these are the training videos that she has run. So there was one on January 22nd. If I try and play this, it'll say you have to watch this on YouTube. So I'm just going to watch this one quickly. If I play this, this is about 33 minute long video where she does a walkthrough of Kaiview, you know, so basically advising people on how to use Kaiview to the most. So she does a lot of these videos and she just puts the replays in here once they're done. Then there's also live case studies that she does. So if I go to this one, let's see. Again, this is about opt-in page creation. Again, another 30 minute long video or so. And here she actually creates an opt-in page in real time and shows you how that works. Then she's got the old videos as well. If I was her, I would actually break it down further into month by month, right? So this is a key difference that you've seen that she's gone back and she's edited titles of these and she's put in some more details concerning exactly what this is about. And I think there's a Facebook group as well. So that's pretty good. It's a, it's a separate, it's in the sweet seal, so it should say Kaiview, but it's a separate group. So that's basically Meili's website. I'm going to jump into our own now because I can really show you stuff more freely there. Let me open that up. Okay. So we have a lot more membership products. I mean, we have, I don't know how many actually. But one of the first ones that we created, I want to show you the difference between the first one and the newest one, right? So one of the first ones that we created, let's see, let's open it up. Okay, it was this one, but let's go back to home for a second. So almost all the trainings that I've done, almost everything that is available has images. To me, that's very important. To me, it's very, very important to have some images. I mean, this one clearly doesn't. And this is why I want to show you because this was the first product that we ever put into Kaivio, our own. It's the old product creation bootcamp. It still doesn't have any kind of uh, images, any kind of graphics. But if I go in, see lessons don't have descriptions. And actually some of the lessons are not even published. So even though you see four here, not all of them are published, which is why you don't actually see them. This module doesn't have any lesson. So we did a very shoddy work on this, really bad work. Compare this to Run Crypto, which is one of the recent training courses that we released. As you can see, we have a cover image. As you can see, all the images for all the modules look quite nice as well. And uh, if I go, okay, this one's still missing. But if I go in here, if I go into Access Module, you'll see now everything is much more neatly laid out. The all the lessons over here, all the modules on the left, and training basically clearly laid out. So this is something that we have changed over time. But let me also then show you a course which has a lot of customers in it. 
I think it is if I go, maybe it's not this site. Let me see if I can find it. There. So Passively is a training course we released a few months ago, I think about six months ago. Uh, it was quite hypey information product sort of thing, but hey, it did, you know, the results were pretty good. So we thought, why not? But let's go back and again, you can see that this one looks quite different, right? It looks much cleaner because someone else set it up. Like in our team, our lead designer set it up. So he made sure that it was much cleaner than what you see with Kyvia right over here. So the end result, what I'm getting to is entirely up to you how you want to configure it, how you want to do it. Look at this one. It's very clean. There's actually a video here in the dashboard that we have configured and I'll show you how it's been constructed behind the scenes. Okay, let's click here to get started. Let's review this first. Okay, these are all the modules and all the videos are in here. There we go. So there's some tasks as well that I had listed next to the video because I wanted people to actually do something after watching that video. So that was listed there and all the videos are listed like this. Okay, so this was an on-camera course that I did to make sure that I was able to create something with least amount of effort. So this one, as you can see, is constructed much differently than anything else, right? It doesn't have those too many pages before it, right? If I go here and if I click on this, yeah, the layout is very different. And this is one of the courses that I want to show you. So let's go ahead and actually edit it. So if I go in here and edit this one, there. We've got a page which looks like any other. But as you can see, the key thing that differentiates this to, let's say, this is the color scheme. That is the key, key difference. So spend as much time as you can on your membership sites. And if you can make them look pretty, you can improve retention. You can improve basically content consumption as well, which is very, very crucial for when it comes to improving. You're basically being more successful by selling something. So if I go back here, there are all these different color schemes that you can monitor from over here. So I don't know if I showed this last time, but you can select which page you want to work on. So for example, let's go ahead and work on the dashboard page and you can configure what your dashboard page should look like. You can change the colors. There, you can change the background, you can change the header, footer, button, and so on. Once you're happy with it, just click on exit and it takes you back. And a lot of this customization can happen here, by the way, in theme page managers. So if I go into customize, you'll see that it allows me to customize this page as well. Right, if I go back here, if I wanted to activate a different theme, I could do that and I could customize that, customize that as well. Right, if I could activate this one, I could customize that too. Uh, but let's go ahead and go into settings for a second. There. So it's also important what your registration page looks like for your membership products. So you can configure all of that here. You can make sure that what you're asking matches up with what people will see when they land here. So for me, I think this is by far the better membership than the others that we've created like this one. What do you think? Let me see, I'll go and answer some questions as well. Okay, uh, what is a slug and is it something I need to update or change? Uh, Marilyn, very, very good question. So slug uh, is an SEO term. It's basically this thing over here. So your site name slash member or login or uh, in my case I called it outsourcing for this one back then it seemed like the optimal choice but honestly it was a bad call for me 
And here's the problem. Once I said it, it's not easy to change it. I mean, you can change it. Of course, you can change it in a second. But the problem is that if someone tries to go to outsourcing, they wouldn't be able to access if you have changed this log. And I can actually show you this right now. Uh, let's go in here. Let me pick a random site that we're not using for anything at the moment. Let's check this. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's just check. Uh, let's just set it up as member. And I'm just going to click save and save. Okay. Where was the from name? Let me just, okay. Okay, save and save. Okay, so this is now, if I click on visit membership, it takes me there. This is now the login URL by default, right? Now let's go ahead and change this to hello world. Save, save, quickly save. Okay, now let's try and go ahead and see what happens. This, it crashes. So for any old member that has that old URL, if they try and go there, nothing would happen. They would have to go to Hello World to be able to actually access the members area. So this is why it is not recommended to change this slug once you've created it. If you do want to change it, make sure all the members know that this has been changed. Okay. Does this need to be reset as well if the theme changes? No. So it's like this. The theme is more about design. It's more about layouts. It's more about orientation. What you see here, a lot of it is all text-based. That's, you know, detached from the theme itself. Okay. Paul's asking, is it better to host training videos for members on YouTube or a private platform like Vimeo? I prefer Vimeo personally because, sure, it costs a little bit. Let me just see how much it is. So I think if I go for, I think we pay for Vimeo Pro basically. Can't remember how much you pay now. Um, yeah, I don't know if plus is, maybe plus is enough as well for you, right? I think they have quite a bit. But I think for like marketing videos, if you're doing sales videos, they prefer if you have pro. So we just bought pro. I can't remember really right now how much you pay, uh, but I think this is pretty good. 14 euros a month or USD is not bad at all. You don't need to pay any more than that. Even five euros a month would be fine. So I would say uh, that go ahead and pick Vimeo if you get the option, if you get the chance. Uh, don't go for YouTube because eventually if a link gets shared, it can be viewed by other people as well. Okay. Uh, videos, just signed up for Woo video. Uh, Marilyn, it's a great question. I don't know enough about it, but if you want something integrated, I think Nicholas can drop a link for you to make a recommendation. But even if we don't integrate it, you can always revert back to the HTML options. If I go into, if I go into, let's say, let's edit one of the products. So let's edit this one. Okay, so if I drag and drop video for a second, you can either choose YouTube Vimeo or you can choose the embed option where you paste the HTML code. So whatever video player you're using, I'm very confident that it will give you the HTML code embed option as well, which will suffice for what you are looking to do here. Okay, cool. Marilyn, I appreciate that as well. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. So this is one of the course that we have created. Um, what I want to want to point out here is different elements that can be placed for this course. So of course you've got the video, 
Then you also have, if I edit this one, You've also got the option for text, which is what I recommend if you want to essentially offer some additional guidelines underneath that video. And you've also got the option of image. So if you want to put some additional designs to help people, you can do that as well. Uh, you've also got the option to put buttons, basically. So you can put a button. You can color that as you want. So let's uh, do this. Let's color this green. Or oh, does the text? Let's color the background red. That's quite bad. Let's do black. Okay. Let's change the border color to black as well. And let's make it white. Let's make let's make it large. And let's again somewhat similar to the features that you have in the smart funnels is that you can move it up and down, and then. If you have a button, you can have a target URL as, URL as well where you want to send people. So I quite often prefer to do surveys within these as well. I can do this, or there's a very, very cool little hack, by the way. So let me edit this text. If I edit it, it's like a regular WordPress editor, right? Which is okay. But what it also gives me the opportunity to do is use source code. So some people have actually used iframing. So I want to show you this example. Uh, let's go for this page. And again, it might not look very good, but I want to still, still show you what this would look like uh, if it was mobile responsive. I'm not sure if this page is. So let me find the code from iframing. There. So let's see. This is the URL we want to preview, we want to use. Okay, while it's loading, let's generate and see if it actually works. Okay, I'll wait, but let's go ahead and just paste that code here. And again, it should work, but I don't know this page, I never use this page, so I'm not sure how it's gonna work. But let's save this for a second and let's preview this. That's the video. And because it's iframing, it takes like a few seconds to load up usually. Sometimes it doesn't if it's bad, but let's see if it actually does in this case. It worries me that that page isn't loading and so this isn't loading either. But let's pick a different one, let's do Instead of this URL, I'll go for let's go for a height 800. Perfect. Done. There. So you can see this is now this is it. So let's go 400. That's too little. Let's go 550, I think. Too much. Let's go 520. That's probably optimum. So let's save this and we can refresh it. And there. So this is now from Kyvio, right? So if you wanted to, you can kind of iframe your page as well. I think in this case, I want to change it up because I want the height to be bigger or rather, what's the term? I want it to be taller i guess so let's go ahead and let's refresh this there so that's something i iframed and this is what it looks like okay because i don't have a scroll bar here i've hidden the scroll bar because i think this option didn't give me a scroll bar uh which is why it's not there if i do yes let's say generate okay let's just change one thing scrolling equal yes there, save, and let's go back and refresh this. There, so now we have scrolling as well, and in a way, and then the entire sales page is visible here. So, if you wanted to do some cool stuff, like if you wanted to sell within a membership course, you could sell like this as well. There's no need to 
send people to another page, I would say just sell to them right within this page. You can just iframe something and you can bring it in here. Does that make sense? Does that kind of give you some ideas, ways in which you can use this? Let me know. Okay. Um, yeah, John, I'll talk about email campaigns next week. So it's planned for the next session. All right. Yeah, uh, if you've never used iframe, Marilyn, it's pretty cool. I think uh, it works most of the time, like you just saw with Vimeo, it didn't work. But I think with Vimeo, they're blocking all iframing. Maybe they don't want anyone to iframe their pages. But doing this essentially allows you to offer more within a membership. And remember right now, like I said before a few times, I don't like the, the design so much. The new ones are pretty cool. They're gonna be quite nice. So it would give it, give us a chance to basically, uh, you know, when we have the new wider ones, it will give us an opportunity to essentially have more in place, allow you to put in more content in there. I think, let me try and think. We had some design somewhere. Mm. I'm trying to find membership templates that we had done and they are kind of waiting integration right now. Let me try and remember it. Okay, just give me a second. In the meantime, please ask any questions you may have and uh, I'm going to answer them soon. Okay, I can't seem to find it right now. It's a little bit frustrating, but yes, we do have a few templates that are waiting to be added in, and then our designer is starting work on a few more of those. All right, let me go back and show you another membership. Okay, let's go to this one. So this was one of them where I was summarizing a course, basically. So I was going through a course myself and I was building a summary and this is how I was doing it. Right, so I had just, it was all text-based content and then I also had some other content underneath that I never published. Never really followed up with this enough but you can also create just text-based courses if that is what you're after. This is one of the courses that I, that I think a lot of people inside the Kaiju community bought access to. It was called uh, 21 Day Recurring Machine. And this is the course that helped people build recurring income in the business as well. So that was one of the one of the courses we did. And I think, let me see. Oh yeah, this was the Insta Mailer thing. So if anyone bought Insta Mailer um, back when it was released, they also got access to this course as a bonus, which included one of them was a. Uh, it was just one module, but it was all like this is two hour video. This one's uh, I think one hour video, and you can see there's some text with a download link. And the next one is 46 minute video and so on. So that's what this course was about. It was about email marketing. But the point is that no matter what it is you want to sell, as long as you want to put it online, you can use Kaiviyo to sell products like that. Design is entirely up to you. I always prefer minimalism, always. Um, Marilyn, I think they were mixing it up. We did not offer that deal. I think we did uh, back when we launched on AppSumo, but it's not on the table anymore. Okay. Um, 
Less, unfortunately, I cannot help you with InstaBuilder because that is not ours. You do have to contact their support team. Okay. Uh, setting up membership tags. Okay, I'll tell you how to do that. Right now, it's more for aesthetics. So right now, it doesn't serve a lot of purpose, but I can show you how to set up membership tags. Um, I, I mean, this is something I want to change as well to make it more useful. It's a great idea, membership tags, but it just doesn't work as effectively as you'd want it to. Like, you know, once you tag them, you can't do much with them, with the tags. But the way to set it up is if you go into a product, go into step four actions, and you can select a new action. You can say that if, let's say, someone purchases this, let's tag them. Let's assign a tag to them. This one or this one or both. So that's how you assign a tag. It only happens at the time of sale or at the sign time of signing up when that lead is collected. But like I said, at the moment, you can't really do much with tags. In future, what I would love to have, and you know, we are planning on this, is being able to use these tags when emailing as well, using Kaivio. So if you're emailing using Kaivio, you can mail people differently based on the tags that they have. I think that would be pretty cool as well. All right. Uh, Marilyn, let me know if that answered your question. If it doesn't, I can explain again. Great. Excellent. If there are any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Like I said, this was more about demonstration, but you know, the key thing I want you to take away from this is that the design for your content is important. These images are very crucial. Please make sure you work on them. It's kind of, you know, easy to just say, no, not right now. But honestly, even doing these images was really easy. All our team did was they kind of copied these ones. They copied this text right over here. That's it. You don't need to make it more complicated than that. Okay, so that's it for this session then I guess what we will do is we'll see you on the next session which is in a week. That's going to be really, really good because that's going to be about email marketing. It will be slightly longer session as well because I'm going to cover everything within one session. So make sure you're there, make sure you watch the replay as well if you've missed anything. Uh, Marilyn, just going back to your question, with public view I assume you still need to set them up as a member. No, with the public view, the way it works is that as long as someone has a link, they can view it. At least that's how it should work. I'm gonna test it out right now to see if it actually works like that or not. So with this link, even if it's, uh, even if I'm not logged in, this should work. Nope, it's forcing me to log in. Or I think it might be that um, it works, but only, they still have to be a member, but they have to be a member of any other product. But I will get your clarification on that because to me, it's a little bit vague. Does public mini works for everyone or does it mean that it only works for people that are logged in but don't have access? I'm not sure. I will get you an explanation on that soon. All right, thanks for asking that question. Okay, can you help with producing videos, music and image libraries, editing videos? Uh, John, no, we cannot. We cannot help with that. Yeah. Okay. Excellent, Marilyn. Appreciate the question and appreciate a lot of engagement today as well. I think it's been a very productive session, short but concise. Go through it to get some inspiration. Go through it to get some ideas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask a lot of our customers to do a video walkthrough of their membership site as well. I think that would be quite useful for everyone. If they did that, I think it'll give you a lot of insights into how other people are structuring their membership sites. So yeah, cool. That's it from my side. If you need anything at all, do let me know. And uh, we'll make sure that we'll cover that in the next session. In the next session, we'll talk about email marketing, which is going to be pretty cool. It's still with the old layout. So when the new layouts go in, 
I'll do another session, no worries. But I want to show you from start to finish what the smart mailer will look like. All right. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll get you the replay in like an hour or so. Bye.